The Vandals were a tribe of people who invaded Europe in the 4th and 5th century and for no apparent reason destroyed much of what they found there. Sometimes it seems as if the Vandals live again and have invaded the United States of America. On every hand, you see public and private property defaced, destroyed, or mutilated for no reason the normal adult mind can comprehend. I suppose the reason is that the act of destruction gives pleasure to the people who do it. It's as if there were not enough good things in the world to go around, and those missing out take their pleasure by destroying what others enjoy. The Vandals, an ABC News broadcast with Harry Reasoner and a cast of thousands. In recent years, it's been popular for critics of our culture to suggest that any change man has made in the way nature had things when he got here is a change for the worse, that we've done nothing to the face of the earth except to make a mess of it. Well, that's not true. The fact is that in sheltering and feeding and amusing ourselves, we've made some alterations to nature that are in all ways for the better. The trouble is that there are 210 million Americans now, and it seems as though more of us know how to take things apart than how to put them together. And then there's a thoughtlessness, a rudeness, a deliberately destructive attitude that seems to prevail. It's making America less good as a place to live by making less attractive both the things man found when he got here and the things he's built since he came. The destructive nature of vandalism is not like a drop bomb. It's small and not very dramatic, but the evidence of it is everywhere. There are 290 national park sites in the United States, and considering American taxpayers put out $226 million to operate these nature preserves, you would think they'd be more careful in them. 1,300 park rangers are not enough of a police force, even in the woods. Campers are illegal in any but designated campsites in many of the parks, but people don't pay much attention to the rule. You wonder how anyone with sensitivity enough to be attracted to the forest can be so insensitive to its charm as to hack up a living tree to feed his campfire. On every hand, you see trees mutilated or chopped down for no reason at all, except that some idiot was given an ax for Christmas and wanted to use it. Park rangers say the people who go deepest into the woods do the least damage. Somehow it often seems as though it is the loveliest parts that the vandals choose to despoil. Part of our problem in America is obviously our obsession with packaging the product, then packaging the package, then wrapping it all, then putting it in a bag. We have so much to throw away. There's something fundamentally ugly about matter out of its own element. A can of cold beer that can look positively beautiful as you reach for it on an icebox shelf is one of the ultimately unattractive things in an otherwise untouched mountain stream. No one who has ever climbed to where it seems no one could ever have been before, only to find an orange peel, is surprised at anything he may find in the woods. Every once in a while, your faith in mankind is revived. We were documenting this broadcast on a trail in the Pocono Mountains when this young man appeared. He was picking up litter left by others and carrying it down the mountain in a plastic bag. He was not interested in our attention to him. The memorials erected in the parks to honor the heroes of another day are largely ignored by everyone except the vandals. It costs $10,000 a year to repair the damage done by vandals here at Grant's tomb alone. The stone beak of this eagle guarding the entrance of the National Monument was broken off by some mindless marauder. Money can't repair this. The vandals used the statues as memorials of their own, and the statues stand now not in honor of the dead, but as testimony to the selfish ignorance of some of the living. One of the most expensive things about vandalism is the steps that have to be taken to prevent it. Museums and libraries have added guards and detection systems. The Kennedy Center in Washington was almost vandalized out of business in its first week of operation. Culture lovers took everything that wasn't nailed down. 
They came back later with a claw hammer to take what was. A total of a million and a half dollars worth. Such cultural Parthenons as Lincoln Center in New York have spent millions protecting themselves. Lincoln Center has an elaborate system with 18 hidden cameras that keep their electronic eyes on every nook and hallway of the complex. Below, the sergeant of the guard watches for troublemakers, petty thieves, and graffiti artists from nearby schools. Lincoln Center is nervous but fairly successful in minimizing vandalism. The unsprayed beauty of the place is a rebuttal to anyone who argues that graffiti is an art of the times. Preventive measures are not always so sophisticated. This cage covers the walkways over a highway that threads through the center of downtown Detroit. Three years ago, someone threw a bowling ball off the bridge. The ball dropped through the windshield of a passing car and killed the driver. Missiles thrown at or dropped on cars cause an estimated 100 deaths a year in the United States and injuries that no one counts. Between mismanagement and vandalism, many of the nation's railroads look like rolling junkyards. When a passenger car gets to the end of the line after a day's run, it's a question of whether to turn it around or throw it away. In 1970, 145 Penn Central passengers or crewmen were seriously hurt by objects thrown by vandals at passing trains. We're all paying more for our cars because of the vandals. General Motors has been shipping three million cars a year by rail. By 1969, vandalism got so bad on the tracks that they began this new containerized shipping method to protect their cars in transit. Kids had been throwing rocks through Cadillac windshields from one end of the country to the other. When open freight cars stopped in rail yards, the vandals were climbing on to remove all those optional extras that come with every car. The Penn Central has begun a helicopter patrol of its tracks to prevent vandalism in troublesome areas. With helicopters patrolling the tracks, injuries from the missiles thrown by vandals have been reduced by two-thirds. Whether a private or public agency sponsors it, you know that the cost of this helicopter ride is added to your railroad ticket, and the vandals ride again. <laughs>